Welcome to another episode of Divine Design Podcast. I'm your host, Chrissy Morales. And today, guys, we've got Patrick Simmons sitting with us. I'm going to let you know that the Lord has kind of laid it on my soul to bring another person in here that's traveling through grief. Because what I find out there is so many people are traveling through grief. You've lost loved ones. You've lost pets. And... You know my journey, and I thought it was time to just revisit this again. Now, what's great about Patrick is the fact that how you're moving through and how you're handling your grief. So, look, without further ado, I'm going to kind of turn it to you. I'm going to let you tell us a little bit of your story, what transpired, and then I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about how you're handling, how you're navigating through it. And I do realize this is ups and downs. It's, it's a struggle day in, day out. But it is so important, our mindsets and how we heal ourselves to be able to live our best life and move on. And I believe throughout these struggles, we experience these things, how we handle them so that we can help others to go through this process and to be healthy, to not get stuck in grief and to live their best life. So Patrick, tell me a little bit about your situation and what what happened. Well, first of all, thank you for having me to the show. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on. You know, as I was just thinking about this and preparing just my mind to kind of focus and, and tell the story because it takes you to certain places. Right. You know, you get there and you, you just you, you start reliving it. And it's, it's for sure it's traumatic. Yes. So for me, my story is I lost my wife in September of 21 from COVID. Okay. So almost two years in a little bit. But she got sick in August. And then I got it as well went through the process to to get healed, to get rid of COVID, of course, which we both did. Okay. But at the end, she got pneumonia. And when she got the pneumonia, then that took over the process of her lungs, just couldn't breathe on oxygen. And then that slowly just deteriorated. And of course, she didn't make it. So the whole process was a little bit close. It was close to a month. So it was it was really difficult. Yeah. It was really difficult to go through that because you had such lows, of course, but you also had highs and hope. Right. And at one point, you would think, okay, we can beat this. Of course, you're optimistic. You're praying. You're doing everything. People praying for you. And then there's a moment you come to that, you know, you've lost the battle. And then there it is. And. So that was, that, I think that was the hardest part, the ups and downs that we went through that month continually. Just like, for example, the weekend before she was intubated, that was, that was the best weekend she had. You know, she was, we were, you know, I was cooking for her. I was able to, which my situation was a little different because of the timing. And what I mean by that, I go back. So in, in September 1st, you could go in and you could see a COVID patient. Okay. So I was I was blessed to have that happen. So I was cooking for her, taking things to the room. I could, you know, massage her, do everything, just help her out, be there and be a part of it. And then, you know, those days were absolutely great. And then the weekend we were able to joke. You know, her voice was was weak, but I mean we had a good time. We had great moments. So we were thinking, hey, we're we're gonna beat this. You know, we were getting ready to at least get you to a rehabilitation, get other things happening. And that was Saturday. Wonderful. Sunday, she woke up. She had turned for the worse. And then Sunday night, there was, you know, they had to intubate her. And uh, so those are how quick it, it went for. It's just one minute you, you think maybe we're going home the next minute or the next day for sure. You know, no chance. So... That's the story, really. Wow, brown. I'm up and down. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for your loss, and I mean that's so tragic. Because uh, number one, it's COVID, mm-hmm. which I feel. Don't even get me started on that. 
And then number two, to, you know, have the hope, but we always have to have hope. Yeah. But to have the hope and then have it turn, it sounds like on a dime yes. immediately. Now towards that, that part, because you said Saturday, you know, we had great, I could feed her, I could do this, you mm-hmm. talk, laugh. Were you not able to see her anymore? You know what I mean? Or you're saying, did this happen at home or is this? No, it was, it was, it was at the hospital. Okay, because so, you're saying incubator. Yeah, so. Yeah, so, so when you started off in, in August. Okay. Remember, only one person could be in the hospital. Okay, so, all right, so, so was, that's, so you, okay, this all happened yeah. in the hospital. Yeah, so okay. she checked in, I dropped her off, and I went home. There's okay. nothing else to do. So, fortunately, however, you know, with, with, with God, it, it, I was able to go up to the floor to see her, which was crazy. Okay. So a lot of people couldn't go up and see her, or go up to or the go floor, and see, their, see yeah, their loved ones. Right. Anyway, it worked out. And I think it was maybe because I had COVID already, so I would just, it was, it was good, and I could, I could go. So I went up, and I could see her for a number of days. And then when they changed everything, then I could actually go into the room. Okay. So it was through the window waving from that stand from that, then actually in the room, which was which I never forget walking in. It was you know, it was a very just sad situation because for COVID patients, they were kinda on their own. You know, they yeah, they, they took it they took it in, they they Gave you your food, and if you could feed yourself, great. If you couldn't feed yourself, it was just what it was. And that is what's heartbreaking for me to hear this story too. Like you're, the, you're really the first story that I've heard with somebody who lost somebody, like you know, during COVID. And and I'm just sorry. I mean, yeah, my 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 heart goes out to you and your family, you know, for sure. And I can't even imagine what you've been through. Yeah. And your family's gone through. Now, <clears throat> very traumatic because she's taken very quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, this is completely unexpected. Yes. Tell me about, because I know that emotions go up and down. Kind of tell me how you've navigated through grief. Now, I know you to be a very positive, you know, person. Yeah. You know, you laugh and, you know, it seems like you don't, allow this to destroy you but then again I don't know what happens behind closed doors so I think that you're traveling Mm -hmm. through grief you know well but share a little light with me and the folks on you know how are you traveling through grief what are the highs what are the lows if something's really bad meaning you know in your head whatever that means how do you deal with that and how do you move on? And I know that's hard to say because dealing with grief is not, I think over time you just learn to manage it. You don't, I don't, you know, that's what I know with my experience. You know, you learn to manage it. But talk to me a little bit about that. So I, I have to go back to the beginning. Okay. And I think for me that was the weirdest time. Cause time stood still for me. Okay. You know, uh, when it came to 24 hours in a day, it seems like I had 48. Okay. <laughs> and, and it was just there. I, I remember just, you know, being at home trying to figure out how, what in the world is happening? How, why won't <laughs> the sun move? Right. <laughs> how we're, this day is just not moving and my mind is just, everything was paused. That was, I think, the weirdest time, and that was hard to deal with because it was so in your face, and and instead of sleeping it off, depression and everything else, I I was wide awake, seeming like I had more time than ever in life, and I was thinking, I understand that, which is which is kind of the way my mind worked. Boy, if I could apply this to business, (laughs) you know, if I could have this kind of time in a day, it would be amazing. But yeah, it was it was it was it was crazy, uh, the fact that, for whatever reason, it seems like I was forced to stop and deal with what was going on, and have to really see it for what it was, because 
when you when you just kind of when you have that time and the love of your life isn't there, you know you you don't have anybody to run and talk to that you. For me, I've married thirty two years, time forever. It was just it was it was it was just a hole, you know. But then I've gone from that to you know just getting busy in a social life, getting to meet people. Just, just getting out there instead of sitting at home. And that's been wonderful. Met a lot of new friends, a lot of great guys. So my my, my guy group is just, it's just unbelievable now. Good. So support. Yeah. So you do have support so from that. Support, okay. Support is, awesome. support is there. That's good. And then now I'm kind of turning around, coming back to, okay, I've, I've done it both. The pendulum swung. And I'm just trying to get to know me, just get to be okay with, Existing in my bubble, my world, I I I don't I don't want to confuse it. Just let me let me go figure it out. Right. And then again, while you're doing all that, you still have life. You still have kids. As we spoke about getting ready to go to college, <laughs> all the other things happening, and you're you're busy, and that's the crazy part. And speaking of kids, for me, and I hope they don't watch this, but for me, I hope they do. <laughs> The, the 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 difficult part was I I couldn't really just stop and go into a cave, so to speak, because every day they would test, they were, you know, how are you? Are you good? And and my daughter would even say, you know, when I asked her, well, how are you? She said, Well it depends on how you are. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now I gotta I gotta fake it. You know, I'm I'm good, I'm good. And I you know, I didn't wanna fake it. So I don't know if that was good or bad. Don't know yet. Okay. Don't know yet. But, you know, I, I, I wasn't able to just stop and go into a hole. Maybe that's good. Again, I have no idea. Right. So it was rough. It was rough. Yes. It yeah. was rough. Absolutely. You know a little bit of my story, mm-hmm. but it, it really is, I've noticed, you know, ups and downs. Yeah. Something can happen or I can experience something that that's a trigger, mm-hmm. you know, and might send me into you know, somewhere for a second, but at least I'm trying to recognize, okay, feel that, Mm -hmm. deal with that. What does that mean for you? And how do I release that? How do I heal that? Mm -hmm. But really it's a understanding, feeling, understanding, dealing and releasing. Mm -hmm. I believe that I've done a good job of it. You know, after almost, it's been almost two and a half years for me. But I think at times I may lie to myself and I don't even know that I'm lying to myself. And so it has been a struggle. I mean, it really has. I mean, I'm not just talking about dealing through grief. I'm probably talking about just dealing dealing with my spiritual awakening and and, uh, the spirituality and what I've been learning as well. And but anyways, I'll do another podcast on that. But it's just, you know, if you could share one thing, uh, what I like about you is you're very, you are positive. So if there is hurt, but I don't know you well enough, you know, but if there's hurt down in there, which I'm sure there is, you know, you don't necessarily, you know, let that be known, but maybe it's just, I don't know you well enough. You know, maybe if I knew you a little bit better, I'm glad that you have the support. You have your boys, you have your kids that you have support because I think going through these times, it is so important to have a support system. And if you don't have a support system, please find yourself a grief group. Please ping to me or in these comments, let us know. And if you're closer around Dallas County, we can help get you into a grief group or direct you in the, the right, you know, direction to seek the support that you need and the help that you truly do need. What I wish for everybody out there is that you do not get stuck in grief, that you do have an outlet, that you are able to have a support system, that you are able to go down deep into yourself and figure out what it is that exactly you need to heal in this situation as well. We know that our loved ones are in a much better place. I mean, we know that. And we know that Marianne is probably smiling down on you you know, and your children in your family, and she's holding you. Mm-hmm. 
she's embracing you. I really do believe that. You'd made a comment to me the other day that things were going so well. And I said, that's probably Marianne kissing you and looking down on you. And you said yes. And so I believe that your loved ones are with you. And I believe you should talk to them. I don't talk to them enough but I think you should talk to them because they're there and they hear you. Whether you believe that or not, I believe in a spiritual world and, and I believe they're there. And I believe she's holding your hand and I believe she's right there with you. So, but if there's one thing you could share with the audience is, or everybody out there, what is one thing that you feel like that has helped you probably the biggest or the most, if you could pinpoint one thing, to help you navigate through grief in this situation? For me, I just erased my past, meaning whatever I was taught, whatever anybody told me, everybody's belief, everybody's time frame, all of the nonsense okay. that we have as humans because we don't know anything. We all hope. Right. We know something. But we have a belief based on writings. And half the time, we can't even confirm that. I just allowed myself to, to just think. To just meditate. Okay. To allow, at one point, and, I, and I, hear me out on this, to allow God to speak with you. Okay. But also allow yourself to be truthful with God. And those conversations were not good. Yeah. You know, because yes. there was a lot of pain. Yeah. And, and and before, and I would say another life, right? You couldn't or we wouldn't be truthful <laughs> with God. Even though when you look at the writings, there's a lot of writings where there are a lot of men, they spoke truth about their feelings. Right. So that's okay. the thing that, that got me through. I just said, hey, I don't care. I don't care what a person thinks about me. I don't care what God thinks about me. I don't care what Satan thinks about me. I, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I just lost a best friend. I just lost half of me. I just lost something. So I was at a point of who can do more damage than this? Right. Who? You know, I went to a dark place. I mean, I was at the point where if God did want to kill me, I'm like, I win. <laughs> yeah. I won one, you know, with with friends who through a lot of other things that happened, you know, kind of put me off. It was it was it was OK because now I just went and I just found new friends, new people, new love. You know, even when it when it comes to God, the thing that I have dealt with with him, I'm more appreciative. Good. Okay. I'm one of those crazy nuts. Even even when it comes to you know the good, the bad, the evil, I'm even appreciative with Satan and what he's done. I mean, it's the yeah, whole. Right. I just allowed myself to see the world for what it really was, and not somebody tell me how it was, and that helped me with my grief because we got good and evil for whatever reason. A person dying is evil. Okay. It's very evil that we have to stay here and deal with this. And then you have to just go figure out what's your truth, why that's the case. Right. And that's what I did. And it turned out it wasn't all so bad. You know, it wasn't all so bad. And all, everything is a moment in time. And we'll be okay. It's beautiful. And we continue to move forward. And it really is, I love that what you're saying, it's really refreshing because I feel like a lot of people don't talk about their truths, don't look for truths, don't, you know, they may be trying to be better people, but they're really not looking in the inside to go heal everything that really truly needs to be healed so that you can live truth. So thank you for that. And, you know, thank you for sharing that. Is there anything else that you want to say? I mean, so many avenues to go down, right? You know, um, that the... That's a loaded question. 
<laughs> well, loaded. you. This is a free space for you yeah. to say what you need to say. You know, my my biggest thing right now is to, which is everybody says it, but whenever you've gone through this kind of tragedy and you lost a mate, especially, you know, you just got to stop and figure you out, love yourself again. Yes. You know, because you've been so used to giving. Right. And 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 making sure it's all there, and now. There's nobody to give to, so the best thing you can do is give to yourself. Right. Just give to yourself. Right. Figure you out. Enjoy that. Yes. And I, in in just our conversation we've had, we're we're different people. Meaning, it's so hard for us to allow ourselves to have fun, to to give to ourselves, to just enjoy. And my outlet was, I can, I can easily give to my wife, right? Right. And that's okay, but but to do it for me, I felt I just felt guilty. Right. And. Not that I'm trying to be narcissistic or anything, but I still want to, I, I want to figure out how to love me. Right. And be okay with it. Exactly. And, and But keep it in its place. Right. Keep it in its place. So that I can have something to give later. And I say that, meaning maybe I will. And we've had the conversation, maybe I won't. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, and because having the conversation with the therapist you know, and just having him say, you know, think about it. Well, you, you might not love again. It's like, oh, hold on. Uh, wait, I'm too young for that. How do we get there? Even though I wasn't there, but just to hear somebody else say it. Right. Really helped me see over time that I really better love me. Right. <laughs> because I might be my last love. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know? wow. I mean, I'm going to let you know, I am extremely emotional right this second. I think you've. You know that and you see that, but I love what you're talking about and I love your truths and I love that you've experienced what you've experienced, meaning, you know, therapeutic, your support system, your, your therapist or whatever that may be, and that you're taking the steps to truly heal and it doesn't matter. And you're like, look, the number one person I got to do is I got to love myself so that I can love people unconditionally and be able to, you know, dish that out because, you know, what I've learned is we love ourselves conditionally. And then what you were talking about earlier, like your beliefs and whatnot, you're so conditioned. You were saying, I got to throw all that away. My conditioned mm -hmm. beliefs about everything. And even to say like, you know, I don't care about God, Satan, blah, 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 blah. You know, y'all do your thing. <laughs> you know, it's all good. But you also recognize that those are the things that help us to heal and to grow as well. Because I believe all of them are really just tests. And the more that I walk spiritually, the more that I find, dude, I'm completely fucked up. And I have so much to deal with myself. There's so much healing that needs to take place in myself. And I'm recognizing that. And I think at times I'm doing well. Um, and I think I am. There has been growth. But there's a lot of things that uh, need to be worked on. That was about me, and sorry for that selfish moment there <laughs> for a second. But I just thank you. I mean, thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you for sharing your story. I know it took a second for you decide to decide to yeah. do this, but I'm so glad that you did. I really want to kind of keep this just kind of short, but maybe what we may do on another at another time and place is have you come back. Absolutely, yeah, and uh, kind of share with the folks how you're traveling through this now uh, because when I talk to you and the things that you know we've talked with each other I feel like you're moving through pretty healthy and that's awesome and I really wish that for everybody else to travel through grief as healthy as you can to learn and it is a, a willingness you gotta want this yes. you gotta want to be better you gotta want to heal yourself and I'm not just talking about, you know, dealing with, you know, a death of a loved one. I'm talking about, you know, just being able to live your best life. And what does that look like? And in order to do that, you truly got to heal mm -hmm. and heal within. So, Patrick, thank you Absolutely. so much for coming on the yeah. show today. And Absolutely. is there anything else that you'd like to say or leave with the folks? No. no I think you, you, you signed it up. Wonderful. <laughs> we just, we just. You have to have the desire. Yes. And then you have to have the courage. You're right. Absolutely right. Dude, right here. Bam. I appreciate you. Yeah. 
All right. All right, guys. Until next time, I hope y'all have a great one.